Hello there, right here we have a brand new 1.17 snapshot. This is 20W49A. This comes with the new Driftstone biome and what we've been all waiting for, the Skulk Sensor. If you guys could do one big favor for me, just join my Discord. Link is right there in the description. Also have it down in the pinned comment. We're trying to reach 7,000 members on it. So just click it and join and say hello in the chat. This is the best way to talk about different ideas and future projects. And if you ever have any questions, you can always ask them there as well. And guys, we are so close to 200,000 subscribers, which I will be doing a special video for answering you guys' questions. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure to click that button. And make sure to click the bell so you get notified of upcoming streams. Speaking of streams, you guys can join the testing stream, which we are doing about the latest snapshot. When you finish this video, just click the link down below. The Skulk Sensor is finally here. You can find it in the Redstone tab in Creative and even is animated. It looks pretty cool. They have the ability to detect vibrations. You can see as I walk around, these little kind of echo vibrations leave my player and go straight towards it. It makes noise, it also makes little redstone particles, but by crouching you can prevent some vibrations from going into the sensor. So by like crouch walking, as well as like jumping and falling while holding crouch, will not activate it. Same for like throwing projectiles while holding crouch. We don't have to worry about Skulk Sensor picking up vibrations from other Skulk Sensors. When a vibration is created, the signal is sent from the source location to the sensor at a speed of one block per game tick. That means it can travel 20 blocks in one second. So the actual little particles you see leaving the player have a consistent speed of traveling, which will make it great for timing devices. So while it's processing some signal, it can't take in more signals. But when signal does arrive, the sensor activates. We'll put a power out for 40 game ticks, which is equivalent to two seconds. And then it has a one game tick cooldown period before it can take in more vibrations. And the cooldown period is prevented from detecting the redstone line changing so it wouldn't create an infinite loop on itself. A sensor can detect signals up to eight blocks away from it. That's eight blocks. Here is nine blocks. It can't detect that. And the tool for picking these things up is the hoe. So you can break them pretty fast. If you break them with your fist, it breaks a lot slower, but you still get the item. And they can also be water logs. If I just right click it, it looks pretty cool. And the way that it emits redstone depends on how close the vibrations are to the sensor. So a vibration very close to this will put off a signal strength of almost max where a vibration that is farther away will put off a lower signal. You can actually tell how far away something is from the sensors just by how much of a signal it makes. So by having two of these, you can actually figure out the exact coordinates of where something is. This is gonna be a lot of fun to play around with. But there's another feature. If you actually hook a comparator up to the skull, it will give signal strengths depending on different types of vibrations. So just by having normal redstone, it detects any type of vibration and gives a strength depending on the distance in this case, it doesn't care about the distance. It just cares about what type of thing is caused the vibration. So walking, doesn't matter where I'm walking, the strength will always be one. If it hit the ground, it's always going to be five. And you can see this chart here. Stepping is one, flap is two, swim is three, a light or free fall is four, in the ground is five, a splash is six. This will be great for making AFK fish farms. Wolf shaking is also six. Projectile shot is seven. Projectile landing is eight. Starting to eat is seven. Finishing eating is eight. If you hit an entity, that's nine. And so is adding an item to an armor stand. Opening a block, switching a block, pressing a block, catching a block, opening a container are all with a signal strength of 11. Closing a block, unswitching a block, unpressing a block, detaching a block, as well as closing container and dispenser failed. We'll have a signal strength of 10. Using flint and steel is 12, so is place block. Destroy block is 13, as well as placing fluid. Destroying block or picking up fluid is both 13, and passing fishing rod is 15, which you could also use inside of an AFK fish farm. And reeling in a fishing rod is 14, extending piston is 15, contracting piston is 14, explosion is 15, and lightning strike is 15. Wow, guys, that is really cool. Like that just gives us so much things that we can do with, with one single new block added to the game. I'm really excited to test these things all out and come up with some new contraptions, especially AFK Fish Farm, because those things are very useful. Another feature with these guys is that wool will prevent signals from going through. So if I place a block over here, you see how this one over here is picking up the signal from this, but this one here cannot because it can't go through the wool. 
So this is a great way to kind of keep your sensor only detecting things that you want and not detecting other red components that are working in the background. Now if I would switch this out with a, another block uh, here, you can see the vibrations can go through the block. So it has to be wool. They also came out with a new dripstone cave biome. We can only access it through creating a new world and in the settings. We go to single biomes, we go customize, we go here to dripstone caves, and let's go ahead and join that. Let's go underground and see what it looks like. Oh wow. So I found some caves with the dripstone block as well as the pointed dripstone. You can see they're kind of in sections. Like here's a section, what it kind of looks like it's on the walls, the floors, the ceiling, with the dripstone connecting to it. So it looks like it kind of implemented it into all the different types of caves that we see. There's not a specific cave type, like here's a ravine and it's inside of that. Here's like that circular cave type and you can find it right there. It also contains small pools of water like we see right here. Here's one that even has some waterlogged dripstone in it. It definitely makes traversing these areas harder because these are actual blocks they need to go around. Like there, it could fit, barely fit through that one. So you have to like break them or somehow get around them. And sometimes you can find these places where they have the actual dripstone blocks making a huge stalagmite. It looks pretty massive. This one's inside of a ravine. And they will eventually add this into the normal default game. Made a small tweak so the fullness text down at the bottom of when highlighting over a bundle will always show up no matter if you have your advanced tooltips turned on or not. That way you can see how much items you have until your bundle is full. They also said it is now a feature that Driftstone won't connect if it is shift clicked up against a block. If you just click on a block then it's going to have this like connected stalactites are connected with the stalagmites. But if you shift click against it, it won't connect. It's kind of cool. So you can do this on either side. Shift clicking versus just placing. They also did some technical changes. Like there's a new game event system that has been implemented in just to support the new skulk sensor that could detect vibrations. This includes all the new events that it can specifically target and react to. They also made a change to world height related values. So they're now exposed in custom worlds. So they removed the max build height server setting. They also added tags for things that give off vibrations as well as things that can dampen the vibrations like wool. Plus there are some new particle types which are the vibration particles and the dust color transmission. There's also quite a few bugs that were fixed in this snapshot, mostly to do with the new dripstone. And crazily enough, majority of bug fixes were things that we came across during our snapshot testing stream. I think it really helped that we had one of the Mojang developers join us in last week's Twitch live stream. They fixed it so that when you have these absorption hearts, they don't get all wonky like this. You see the little white and red hearts just above the frozen ones. Now they should be textured properly. In the past snapshot, there was a problem that if you would break a double slabbed upper block, so two slabs make one full block, it only drop a single slab. They also fix a bug to do with waxed copper oxidizing when it shouldn't. So I'm going to fill this in with some more waxed copper and we'll see if it changes at all. They fix a problem so even liquid sources that are farther away than just being one block away from the hip dripstone here can still fill up cauldrons. So in the past it had to be like liquid, block, and then dripstone. And now it could be like this where there's blocks in between. When you normally use a set block command, it switches out the blocks without dropping items. But with pointed dripstone, it was actually dropping the item. Cobble item was dropped from that, like it was mined. So that's now been fixed. They also fix it so that when you drop a very large stalactite, the items don't get destroyed by the ones that fall after it. That was because these falling dripstone were using the same mechanics as the anvil, so they were destroying the items. And the player actually falling onto the tip was using the same mechanics as like player falling, just dribbling the damage output. They fixed another weird one that we came across, which was if you line yourself and then drop yourself onto not the tip of it, but the piece below it, it would actually prevent you from taking any fall damage. They fixed this bug where this piece here was actually duplicating. Notice that these two fall, these two pieces fall as falling blocks, meaning that they do drop items. But when I remove this, you'll see an item actually pops off of this too. There goes an item right there. And that is because it actually duplicated and they fixed that. They also fixed some inconsistencies with dripstone landing on different types of non-mob entities. Now we should see some new mechanics with this. And in the past snapshot, there was this bug where you could remove the block and it wouldn't fall down. It could even remove sections in between when it update. And this has now been changed. In the past snapshot, you could put waterlog stalagmite and remove blocks from it. And the water wouldn't get updated. Now this has changed. They also changed it so that pistons that have dripstone underneath of them 
when they are extended, will pop off. They also change it so dripstone will no longer show the little water particles dripping off of the block when in the nether dimension. So these little things have been removed. I made a slight tweak so that the player will appear to actually be touching the dripstone item in his hand. In the past version, you can see that there's like a little gap between my hand and the item I'm holding. They also change it so you can no longer place dripstone blocks inside of yourself. So if you had one like this and stand beside it, and then you clicked on it, now I'm technically inside of this lower block because it got bigger. You can see what it looks like with my hitbox on. There was a problem that when these black tights would be offset so that they're really close together, if you would have them drop, they would end up clipping in the side of the ones beside them and kind of popping off like this one did before it actually hit the bottom. There's also a problem that if you'd be aiming at one of the pieces that kind of hang over, you're still aiming at this one. But if I just go over here and now thinks I'm aiming at the trap door, even though I'm still actually aiming at this image, yet the block is not considered over here. That has now been changed. They also fixed a problem to do with function tags in a particular configuration weren't running. They also fixed a bug to do with the world height being increased, or at least I'm trying to work on it. It has to do with the game looking for the maximum and minimum world height. And this is done when like the players log in or respawning. So it does seem like they're trying to expand the world height of Minecraft based off of this bug report. They also change it so that signs now use the cache for sign material. So when rendering, this is a 30% increase in frames per second. And that's quite a bit. During our last week's testing, I came across this weird bug where putting blocks in and out of a chunk was kicking all the members out of the server and throwing an air. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Can somebody get a clip of that? And Henrik, being one of the Mojang developers, was wondering if this could be replicated so that he could fix it. And it seems like they figured out the cause of it. And it was a decoder exception. So hopefully we won't have that problem anymore during our testing stream. It's pretty amazing how fortunate we were to actually have a developer on. So he can actually kind of experience the different issues we have when we run a vanilla server with a bunch of people on. I think he might have been a bit surprised at how many times we crashed the server. All in all, a really cool snapshot. And don't forget to join our testing live stream. You guys actually hop onto the server with us as we test out all the new things. You can even see some really cool builds that Sam Gamer NL did. Even if you're not really technical, you can come on here and build stuff up. Just remember to save in a structure block in case it gets damaged during the testing. All the information about how to join the server and what we are doing on the server can be answered by joining my Twitch link down below. You can chill out in the stream or even hop onto a server or even join us in our voice call on my Discord. If you haven't already joined my Discord, make sure to do so. We're trying to reach 7,000 members on there, so just click the link down below. And don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as share with others. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys over in my stream. Bye-bye.